Hello there, uh, my name's James Bourbon. Um, please can somebody help me ra raise enough money, basically, for, to get my guardian angel over to here from America and vice versa, me and my boys, to go over to Ohio in America to where, like I said, my guardian angel lives. And I say that because we've never met yet through a site called cosmofunnel.com she has created my own autobiography and is making me a proper author um, I'm amazed by this I'm going to put into a worldwide poetry collective book as well um, and I'm basically trying to create this dream um, because I'm terminally with cancer myself Obviously, I'd love, I, I do say to her, well, I'm going to be here till I'm 85, but I was meant to die back in 2005 now. I was told five to ten years, about 14 years ago, but I'm still here. Um, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the fact that she's wrote or written my own autobiography throughout all of my words and all my poetry and lyrics through CosmoFinal.com. Um... Because of all the meds that I'm on, I find it so hard to concentrate on just one poem at a time or to make the book. I've tried to do it in the past and my meds that I'm on just block me. I get a mental block and um, I'm terminal, as I said, with cancer. I've got three types of cancer, which I've had since Christmas. I've known about since Christmas Eve 2004, but I had since year 2000, when I was 15, I'm now 35, so I'm doing all right, considering I was told I had two to three weeks left in 2005, in May. But um, basically, um, the whole point of this is so I can surprise Katina Woodruff Borgensen, who is creating my kind of autobiography, poetry, life log and getting it published um, through, through Amazon or um, a, another publi publisher that she's found. Um, she's just she's trying to raise the funds in America right now to do this. And bless her, the main reason for this is because when she asked me um, right, where I lived and her husband would pay for the bus pass anywhere in the USA to... Um, get my the, the book signed by me the first ever copy so she could have it um i had to kindly inform her that i lived in the uk so th this is the reason for this so yeah i'm trying to set up an international page so i can hand over the this first copy of the book to her and um, she's been working day and night now for the last few months um creating draft after draft after draft um uh, which is all copyrighted on, on the site, like I say. Um, but, yeah, like I said, when she said about the bus fare, that really stumped me, and I really wanted to do something that I could I don't, make a difference in her life, as well as for what she's doing for mine, you know? So once again, what I am trying to do, the whole purpose of this um, crowdfunding is to be able to... <clears throat> sorry, is to be able to um, have both of us go both ways from her to Ohio to here um, in sunny Ipswich in the UK or Shotley Gate where we live um, and us over to Ohio with book in hand ready for um, her and I'll sign it in front of her. Um, and we're both disabled, we're both on bent, um, she's on awful welfare benefits in the states but i mean i'm on benefits here so i and i barely get enough to scrape by each month um without help as it is um i'm a single terminally ill single dad of three amazing boys um i have i've been their single dad now for the past four years and it well, since january the 2nd 2017 but um basically i'm just asking for this flight across the Atlantic both ways um, 
neither of us know, well, tomorrow, anyone, anyone can get hit by a bus tomorrow, but um, we both are in ill health and neither of us know what our futures hold. So we are trying to raise these, these funds as quickly as we possibly can. Um, now, so before we even, uh, I mean, God forbid we do, um, I'm sorry, God forbid we don't pass, um, because I'd love to be able to meet this woman in person, because she is literally making all my dreams come true, um, and leaving behind my story of my, well, it's now 20 year fight against cancer, with, um, by using unconventional methods, um, which have worked for me, but don't for other people. Chemo didn't work, but I've other things have worked for me, and it was all explained in my book. But, um, yeah, so please, can you, um, someone help me make this happen and make it a worldwide fundraiser <clears throat> to fill both mine and Katina's dreams that we both now share. I mean, like I said, she's my guardian angel, one of many, as, she's, and I, as I believe in fate. And she, I mean, she's making me an accomplished author, which is my, the biggest dream I've had for such a long time and has made my kids so proud and has made my family and myself proud. Um, and it shows no matter what in life you go through, your life, everyone's life has a purpose. Um, I mean, this new guardian angel of a lady of mine has been watching me from afar for the last few years under cloak and dagger and first asked me, um, if I minded having two of my poems, or so three of my poems, which I've now found out, of my collection in the Worldwide Poetry Collective book. And of which I said yes, um, straight away. Um, and finally given some recognition for my work by being put into this book. But when I was replying to the first email, I got I literally just about to press send and saying how I wanted to write my own autobiography but I couldn't do it because of my meds at the time, at the moment, I got a ping and a message through from her and it, it was just, my hairs are standing on in my arm now. Um, she, I, I sent the message and opened it and she was asking if she could write my autobiography for me, like I say, using my own words. So it's so what she's done and she's just the most amazing woman in the world to do this um, and we've formed such an amazing um, friendship um, and she really overwhelmed me and this was my reply so it's called not enough words so there's not enough words in the world to say or speak that could elaborate exactly how you've made me feel today even your first message had me crying, but in tears of joy, just yesterday. All the way from across the pond, in the land of the free, we have formed a special bond. Across the great waters, over and in between the formidable oceans of the Atlantic Sea. Distance doesn't matter though. Even though my vessel is taken on water and is now sinking faster, no more am I able to stem the flow. Then along comes what I hope to be a new forever friend, adding smiles to my face, and my boys always give, and always do, will always do, to my life story's end. I wonder and hope that before I pass, if I'll be proud enough to see this amazing woman I seek, as what she's doing for me and my boys, there's no way I'll not formally meet. So I'll save my pennies, and I'll save every spare pound, and hopefully enough to get to her and into Ohio's airport ground. As if by magic, suddenly appears this phenomenal woman, sensational, surreal, and to me a marvel. She's my saving grace. She's writing my life story, collecting my life's poems, my lyrics, with other great authors and writers from all over the place. I just want to say thank you to this kind-hearted lady's face, even though not yet met, She's not a stranger. I didn't realise, like me, she's been in undercover stealth mode, cloak and dagger, watching from a distance to then pounce and instead write the nicest of letters instead of daggers. I was completely staggered. Katina's kindness was evident from the start. 
For little did she know, we are seemingly worlds apart. That's not stopped her. She's on a roll now. If this book turns out a hit or not, I've eternally blessed her for doing something for me that is that at this moment in my life, unfortunately, I cannot. My brain is like a sieve. It's all one big tangle in a single knot. Please, from this day forth, shine good karma from within, as this is priceless to me. Showing money really isn't everything. Through this, I will forever be bound to this ultra amazing, bewildering lady, whom has now made my head space bound. Even though my own writing is too much for my brain to take, as at the moment I'm fighting another type of meds and lung cancer make. This godlike woman, Katina, is wanting to create this book of life for me, a quest I thought was barren, and not just my life, but also my poetry. She's become a guardian angel to a soul that had become lost, floating slowly away, right up to this very moment, to then be back on earth again, through this book, for richest diamond wants no pay. She just believes the world needs to hear my voice, to hear me have my say. I love you for this, Katina, so your husband best make way, as he is a mere mortal, and through this book, I can now eternally stay. So, if I give you a little insight into my life story, it was back into the year 2000, um, I was 15 years old, and that's when I first found out about my cancer, and I had chemotherapy and radiotherapy in 2004, and unconventional methods of cannabis therapy has worked keep in keeping my um, life alive and here. Um, my doc, my oncologist in London told me to, in 2005, to start smoking it after years of it. I mean, I should have died within eight weeks of contracting it because I smoked cannabis from a young age. I'd held it back. And even now, I get prescribed it medically. Um, it's still fighting my corner for me. Um, my doctor doesn't believe how I'm still here now. Um, I've had to just to stop work. I'm a chef by trade, also a dog groomer of all things. But um, yeah, I can't do none of that now. And I just want to do this to repay the lady who's made me an author, something I can do. And I would, I just really would love to do this for this woman. So any help from anyone would be massively appreciated. Thank you. My name's James Bevan, and um, hopefully I'll receive some help from someone internationally, um, not just friends on my Facebook page, etc., etc. Thank you for meeting me today and taking the time to listen to my long-ass video. Thank you.